What up nerds? My name is Leslie Smith. Welcome to the Nerdy Narrative, a channel where I like to talk about all of the things that I read. It's been a while since I have seen you guys. I've got a lot to update you with. I unfortunately succumbed to the pandemic that's been going around the last couple of years. I got the latest iteration. It really set me back and I just... I've been a mess guys. I've been a mess, but I'm trying to mount my comeback. I am so far behind on where I want it to be. Nothing can be done for it except to just start picking things up, getting back in the swing of it. So today is all about catching you up to speed on what I've been up to. First, before we go any further, I have two new top tier patrons I want to give a huge shout out to. That would be Kate over at the Literary Apothecary. Kate has been a patron of this channel for forever. I just honestly can't remember a time that she wasn't, but she did recently sneak in there and upgrade to top tier status. Along with Kate, Justin King also joined the family. So guys, thank you so much for joining the Patreon and supporting the channel. I am so sorry you guys joined the top tier when I was down and out, but I am hoping to get back up and running on my feet and uh, get back to providing that extra content to you guys very, very soon. As far as my progress with the May the Force Read With You readathon that I'm co-hosting along with Eric from Break Even Books and Steph from Coffee Over Apples, I have achieved the Dark Lord of the Sith rank. I did get my five books read. That's literally all I think I managed to get done this month before I've literally just been unable to read for the last couple of weeks. I've just had a very foggy brain due to being sick and then being on a steroid, trying to like get my ears cleared up. And I just, I tried to read, I did. I could maybe read for maybe 30 minutes sometimes. And then it was bad about forgetting what I was reading and I'd have to go back and start from the last place that I could remember what happened. So I haven't been able to work on extra books for things like weapons or a partner, but there's still a few days left. I might can at least sneak one in there. And then finally, Saturday, tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern, will be the live show for the Wine and Crime Book Club. Our pick for the month of May was Insomnia by Sarah Penbro. I was able to get this one taken care of right down to the wire. And you know, it turns out I read it at a time that really made it extra creepy because the title is Insomnia, the main character is suffering from insomnia. I had insomnia due to the steroid I was taking for my ears. So I had a really good time with this book. So the live show for this one is tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern. Join us if you have read it. We will start out talking spoiler free, just what our thoughts and ratings were. You know, if we think folks who enjoy thrillers would like this one. So if you want to get a feel for it, you can catch the first, you know, maybe 10 minutes or so and see what we all think. And then you can dip out while the rest of us talk spoilers and theories. I act, no, I'm not going to say, I'm going to save that for the show. I'm going to save that for the show. And I'm just going to start talking about what all have I read since I talked to you guys last? So I did read the next story in the Skeleton Crew collection by Stephen King, Survivor Type. <sighs> we humans are capable of doing things in order to survive, in order to save someone that we love. I mean, you read all of these stories about mothers who on adrenaline were able to lift cars off their children. Just the things that we are able to do when we are put into certain situations is astounding. And this story was so believable and it was just so surgically laid out. It made sense. I could see this happening. I could understand this character doing exactly what they did. But it is about a man who is a surgeon and he worked very hard to become a surgeon and pull himself out of where he came from and he was successful but he also was a little bit on the wrong side of the law. He did some things to help support himself through medical school and he just kind of kept it going. It was a little sugar on top and found himself in different types of situations. He finds himself on a boat because he is doing something illegal, the boat sinks, 
he is on a very small island. I don't even know if I would call it an island. It sounded more like a rock. And what he does to sustain his life, it's a psychological horror. It's really good. It's written really well. I just think that is peak Stephen King. That is the type of material that I have just that's his reputation to me. That's a piece that whenever I used to think of Stephen King, that is the type of work I always thought of. And that's what I expect from him. And it was, it delivered, it delivered. Let's see, next up, I did finish Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. I also was part of a live show discussing this book. It was the Shelf Space Book Club pick for, I believe, the month of April. I was in the midst of taking my steroid. I have no idea if I made any type of sense whatsoever. I was physically there. That's about all I remember of it, to be honest. I hope I was able to articulate some of the things that I loved about this book. I did love this book. You know, it's one I think is better if it is digested in smaller chunks per day. I did read other books with it. I did not focus on it. I could have easily sat and binged it, but I think it would have been too much information. I think I would have lost out on some of the joy of reading this story and experiencing it if I read too many chunks at a time because we are getting the story of Hadrian Marlowe. He is telling us about his life. He does go into great detail and it is a slow moving story and I wanted to kind of take those chunks of his story of his life slowly and I'm glad that I did. There is so much to love about this. It's just beautifully written. I am just completely astounded that this is Christopher Rocchio's debut. Like that is written on a top tier level for me as far as prose and just the way the story is crafted. When I'm able to sit down and really just go through my notes and collect everything, I will do a review of that one talking about my experience reading it, but I absolutely loved it. I would recommend it for anyone who loves science fiction, who loves fantasy, who loves intricate stories. Now it is one, he is telling the story of his life, so he does spoil a lot of the story. I mean, you basically start out and he tells you, here's all of the things I've done, here's what I'm known for. So you do know what's coming, but I am one of those that that's okay. I don't, I don't mind if I know the beginning and the end. I am more interested in the journey what happened to this person in their life that made them make the choices that they made that brought us from point A to point B. So I absolutely loved it. I cannot wait to continue the series. Now this one feels like I read it a long time ago, but it is possible that I finished it like right on the tail end of the last time I talked to you guys before I got sick. I love this book. I absolutely will be doing a dedicated video review for this one. Karen Hewler just absolutely delighted me with this book. We do have some magic. It is a story about a coven of witches. There's one missing and they send one who's been a little bit of a troublemaker. They send her to go investigate. Well, they also send Stan the cat. Stan used to be a man that made Eleanor the witch mad and she transformed him into a cat. So he is now a talking cat who likes to eat fish tacos, drink craft beer, and shoot people. But he only shoots one person per day and he doesn't kill them. I won't lie to you, I 100% read this book because of the talking cat. Be looking for that review. I hope to have that up early June because this one does publish on June the 14th and I want you guys to have enough information to know if it's one you want to pick up or not. Of course I mentioned earlier because I talked about the live show tomorrow. I finished Insomnia by Sarah Pemberrow. I like her as an author. The story was fantastic. The going through the character Emma, she's very upset. Her mother, when she turned 40, literally went mad. And now Emma herself is just days from turning 40 and she is in fear that she's going to suffer the same fate as her mother because there's this whole deal about second children in her mother's family. You know, several of them did in fact have mental illness and it's just, you know, you, you can relate to that. I can relate to that. So there was so many things to it that made it just really impactful to me. But there was just this one thing that I didn't like that I thought, if you had just found a different way to do that, it would have been so much better. But 
like I said, that is 100% my personal opinion. Looking forward to seeing what everyone else who read it in the book club thinks. I also finished Liminal Spaces. It is a dark speculative fiction anthology put together, edited by Kevin Lucia. I had a really great time with this collection. I love so many of these stories. There are so many wonderful authors who are a part of this collection. It really, there was no way that it could not be a fantastic collection, but I did finish this one. I really enjoyed it. I did try Pulse by B.A. Bellick. It did not work for me. I ended up DNFing it after 60 pages. I, I don't know what was happening. We changed characters so many times so quickly, jumping forward in time as well. I was never with one enough to get an attachment to, get a feel for. I know that there was Pulse is this big music festival, something or other, and there's people who are against it that are plotting an attack. There was one mention of this monster. It didn't feel like a story. It felt like just a whole bunch of facts laid out, like a screenplay, and I, it felt very one-dimensional to me. I wasn't jiving with it. I was not enjoying it so i did dnf that one i did also start and finish the cursed among us by john durgin that book was so fun if you're someone like me who has grown up on slashers you love halloween that's one of your favorite holidays this is a book that you're gonna really love i'm one of those that the whole month of october sometimes even in september i will watch every scary movie i can find on tv B movies, I don't care, but especially slashers, they're my favorite. And they're formulaic. There are certain events that are gonna happen in a slasher. You know this, but you don't know when they're gonna happen or exactly how. This is one that I'm going to recommend come close to fall as one to start the season off with because it was a very familiar story and John put his own twist on it. And one thing I liked most about what he did and these types of stories, movies, Teenagers, if they're involved, they do not typically ask for help or tell adults anything that's going on, which doesn't really make sense. In John's story, they do. They ask for help. They look to adults for help. And I thought, okay, it's nice to see somebody putting some common sense acting kids in these stories. So I really enjoyed that one. And let's see, I think that is everything I completed. And I know it sounds like a lot, but I've been working on this stuff for what feels like almost three weeks. I can't even remember the last time I talked to you guys. It's so crazy. The only thing I am working on currently is Kristen Britton's Black Veil. I am almost done with it. It's taking me forever because again, it's just been very difficult to concentrate, to read for long periods of time. I do have the audiobook checked out from the library to listen to. And unfortunately, most of what I listen to it didn't stick. I shouldn't have even tried. I wasn't feeling well. I was zoning out. And so I had to go back and read physically. And I, unfortunately, I have not retained much of this one. So I might make the decision to put this one down and reset and restart it later. Because unfortunately, I am so far behind on things I've accepted for review and some secret projects coming up that I don't know that I have time to start it over from the beginning and figure out what I want to do. I've also been slowly working on beta reading another book. It's a book two in a series that I read the first one. It's a YA fantasy series. I actually feel useful in this one. I feel like I'm able to provide some really good feedback because of just how I grew up. So more on that later. So what am I going to read next? Well, for my short stories, I'm going to get back into Richard Thomas's Tribulations collection and get that worked on and finished up so I can review that one for you. This one I got a good start on. I can't wait to get finished. Those little mini reviews you can find on my Instagram. But as far as books, the next one I'm going to read is going to be Mark Allen Gunnell's When It Rains. And provided I don't have any issues with headaches and all that kind of fun thing coming back, I should be able to knock this one out pretty quickly. But this one, there is something in the rain 
But then again, you also don't want to be trapped inside. I am so excited. I've been so excited for this one ever since I got my hands on it. I am now finally going to get this one taken care of this week. I don't know what else. I'm definitely going to read something else, but I don't know what that's going to be because I have a project that I'm going to be helping with over the next few months. So I am likely going to choose one of those books. That announcement should be coming out very soon and I'll talk more openly about it with y'all and share with you. That should bring us up to date on all the things I read before I got sick and the few little things I lipped through while I have been sick. I'm feeling much better. Now that the steroid is getting out of my system, I'm actually feeling more normal. So I should, from here on out, everything's gonna get back to running normally. We hope. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for your get well wishes and all of your thoughts as I have been struggling through the last few weeks. I appreciate it so much more than I could ever tell you. Have a wonderful weekend and I will catch you in the next one.